Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about Shopify at Bridge V4 um, and migrating your app to it. Um, there's going to be some tips and tricks and some of the reasons why it's a good thing. Um, I know this rollout has been a bit controversial. I know that some people have found it quite difficult to migrate to it, um, but it is getting more stable and so hopefully there are good things ahead with this because um, it introduces some really cool concepts. So the first thing that I'm going to start with, and I think this is the most important thing that is tripping people up, is Shopify at Bridge V4 is all client side based. So if you're using just default React or Preact, uh, then you're all good uh, as you're rendering everything on the client. Um, if you're using something like Remix or Next.js, there are a couple little gotchas that you just need to be aware of. Um, while migrating to AppBridge v4 because it is doing things generally speaking on the client um, so you just need to think about how you're building your application and keep that in mind while you're doing it. Now in terms of migrating I'm not going to take you through all of it but there's this really useful migration guide um, it talks you through how to set it up so now you just need to inject uh, this into your app head um, and it will automatically load the Shopify app bridge client for you. No need to install um, dependencies anymore, um, except this one here. Uh, and then a couple of things you can clean up, how to migrate certain components, um, and much further down, how to migrate all of the hooks and things that you'll need. Um, I would recommend reading this like at least a few times before you start changing the code because there are quite a few things in here that are useful to know um, that are kind of in the text but you don't catch them unless you read them twice or at least that's my experience of it um, so yeah extremely useful guide um, would check out would read it a few times before start coding um, now there's a couple of bits that i mentioned that are gotchas that I found with Remix and next year, so I'll cover them now um, and then we can move on to some interesting features of it. So the first example um, here is with the save bar, so uh, some of the people might call it the contextual save bar that pops up up at the top. Um, I was doing working with Remix recently and um, one of the things that was happening there is you, need, you can only trigger this you Shopify save bar hide or Shopify save bar uh, show is another method on it um, on the client so you'll need to wrap it in a use effect um, just to make sure that is actually happening only on the client because again the new app bridge v4 is only available on the client side you can't access it on server side for remix so um, something to bear in mind when you're doing uh, to hide and save the of the save bar or using any of the methods that are available to you in the average v4 um, similarly with Next.js, I had a bit of a nightmare implementing this in the Next.js app um, and what we ended up having to do is use this underscore document um, to actually make sure that we were adding the correct tags into the head of all pages and doing it uh, so it was the first tag available in the page as well because if it's not the first script tag in the head um, that could cause you some issues as well. So using the underscore document to control that was really helpful. Um, it did take me a while to find, so I thought I'd mention it here because um, hopefully it'll save you some time. Now that we kind of got through all the migration bits, there are some really cool features of this. So for example, let me jump into my application. Um, I'm using client side rendered Preact for performance reasons. Um, and so I'll kind of get talk through some examples. So like we talked about, this is all you need to do now to load the app bridge into your application. Again, put your API key in. Um, and you can see it's the first script in my head as well. So super easy to add and instantiate. Um, no more having to pass hosts to it and shop tags to it. Um, you just do this and it'll all work for you. Um, here is a form that I'm doing. Um, and this form has a couple of states. So you can see now how easy it is to trigger a loading bar. So if you do Shopify.loading true, um, that will pop a loading bar at the top of the page. Um, same with uh, if you want to make sure there are no loading bars, you can just check, check it to false. 
Um, if you want to show a toast, that's super easy now. You can just do this method here, and that will show uh, that message for that long. And you can do some custom handling when someone dismisses it or when the toast goes away. Um, if you want to route to another page, you can use this open. Um, no need to import anything. Open is a browser standard thing, so um, it's really easy to use and implement. And you can do some really interesting things with this open. So uh, let me just jump back to documentation. Uh, and if we go into navigation, cool. So let's talk about navigation. Um, so if you're triggering navigation in JavaScript, it's really easy. Just call open um, and the path you want, and that will open it directly in your app. Um, again, if you want to do uh, external URLs, you can do that and make sure you pass top, and that will uh, open it in the same window. Um, but what is really cool is if you want to navigate to pages within the Shopify admin, now what you can do is prefix it with Shopify colon ad slash admin and then the path you want. So if this is navigating to a specific product or a specific customer, you can do that directly now. So it means that it's really seamless for you to move for your merchants to move between your application and Shopify admin. Um, the load times are really good as well because Shopify is handling it all for you. Um, so it's really great. There's a couple of other really powerful things that uh, moving to average v4 gives you. So if we go back to my application um, and go into service, you can see now that with uh, fetch, you can make direct API calls. So I'm calling Shopify's admin API here directly from my client side application. Um, and getting the current, if they're currently subscribed or not. Um, and again, you can do this for more complex things. And we mentioned that direct API in access in a video earlier. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but uh, just prefixing this means that you get all that wonderful data um, without having to create an API yourself. What is also great is if you're using um, fetch uh, to call your backend, it will automatically get the session token. Um, so you won't have to uh, inject your own session tokens anymore. Um, you can just do that via Shopify's API. Um, it comes with the couple of key components. So uh, navbar, savebar, titlebar, modal. I've seen quite a few people having issues with modal. So maybe keep an eye on the GitHub issues to see if that's something you want to use on that. Again, you can use the React version of it. If you're not using React, there are now web component versions of it available, which is great. And there's a whole heap of APIs that you can use. Um, one of my favorite ones is Result Picker, just because this is ridiculously easy to implement now. Um, uh, at which we fall, a little, little bit to get your head around, but I think it's moving in a good direction where it's much easier to access some of the Shopify native things and embed it more directly. The gotcha is just to make sure that you're always using it on the client side of your application and not trying to use it on the server. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helps make this migration a bit easier for you. Hopefully it saves you a bit of time and it was helpful.